we've got Powell, according to the markets anyway, interpretation of his speech on Friday on the back burner. You're watching inflation very, very closely and in terms of what it means for relative valuations in different countries. What if we get a really strong jobs report in the U.S. on Friday? What if inflation shows that it's not going to back down easily? Does that change your investment outlook at all? Well, certainly from the perspective of the 10-year yield, we're not expecting uh, uh, too much uh, in the way of uh, significant uh, uh, policy changes uh, before the end of the year. Uh, I, I think given that uh, several Fed governors uh, came out uh, making somewhat uh, more hawkish comments about uh, ending QE as quickly as possible, uh, Powell had the opportunity to actually uh, uh, signal the same, but he did did not. Uh, and and we think that our base case scenario of um, uh, seeing QE uh, uh, starting to taper uh, by the end of this year, but uh, really only starting to see it uh, in significant uh, uh, um, you know volume next year is is an appropriate base case. So, uh, so go ahead. You know, yeah. Uh, Finish that answer. <laughs> <laughs> well. Uh, Kathleen, I, I think we are uh, uh, thinking that, uh, you know, from an equity market perspective, uh, there isn't uh, a ton to worry about uh, in terms of, uh, uh, you know, uh, valuation multiples being uh, reduced further okay. uh, from what we've already seen this year. Well, I want to ask you about Japan because you're pretty bullish uh, on Japan. What, what do you base that on and uh, what is going to drive that? Pretty independent, I would think, of the Fed because the way the Japanese economy and inflation look, there's no, no reason for the BOJ to do anything right now. Uh, that's right. We haven't really seen uh, a ton of inflation coming out of Japan, but there's a few different factors at work uh, that make us uh, incrementally more positive on that market. Uh, clearly, we're seeing vaccination rates, uh, you know, uh, uh, hitting uh, around the 50 percent mark uh, by the end of this month. Uh, and we are also seeing a very light uh, investor positioning. And so when we look at earnings growth, and it's basically just as strong as what we're seeing out of markets like, like Europe or, or even the U.S., uh, you know, there's actually quite a lot to like there, especially when we see uh, continued structural change uh, in terms of uh, uh, corporate governance and uh, improvements to return on equity. David, I want to take you to our question of the day, of course, as we're still kind of mulling over the communications from Jackson Hole. What could potentially derail this kind of sigh of relief type rally that we're already starting to see? Well, I, I think most people are uh, understanding that that tapering will happen uh, sooner uh, uh, than, um, you know, I, I guess uh, uh, Q1 of, of next year. But uh, you know, within that context, uh, there is still, uh, I think, questions over how much uh, additional Treasury supply is coming to the market. Um, and, uh, you know, when we uh, take all of these different factors into consideration, uh, you know, our base case expectation is for only a very gradual glide path to, to um, slightly higher 10-year yields by the end of this year. Uh, and uh, when we think of uh, uh, risks to the marketplace, it, it's difficult to think of any. We've seen incredibly uh, robust uh, inflation data that uh, uh, the Federal Reserve uh, has said, uh, you know, now uh, constitutes uh, substantial forward progress. But, you know, we, we are not uh, really sensing that uh, they are panicking in any way. What are some of the defensive picks and strategies that are compelling right now? Well, uh, it's interesting that you asked that, uh, Heidi, because when we look at uh, the uh, uh, equity markets, uh, obviously growth has moved, uh, uh, value uh, has actually uh, seen a significant move uh, in, at the beginning of this year. But when we look at defensive names like the consumer staples of developed markets, they're actually uh, probably uh, the, the most compelling from a, a price standpoint. Uh, and you know, we understand why uh, people want to engage with the recovery. Uh, and so, uh, you know, given that uh, it's not as uh, uh, sensitive to economic recovery, people have stayed away. But when we're looking at uh, equity markets broadly from a free cash flow yield perspective uh, and comparing the uh, uh, 
uh, uh, dividend yield as well as uh, uh, you know buyback yields that are coming out of some of the more defensive parts of this market, it may actually be the place to position. Because remember that the other issue we need to face up to in equity markets going into 2022 is how uh, mm. uh, uh, much our, uh, uh, stock do we place, uh, uh, quite literally, in uh, uh, the conviction we have on earnings in 2022 uh, in terms of earnings to, um, delivery. And so we very much recommend uh, quality uh, with some amount of defensiveness uh, to portfolios at this point in time.